This AI automation lets you schedule unlimited social media posts for free using Postus. It has a powerful API that works with LinkedIn, X, YouTube, Instagram, and more, so you can run it directly from NAN and all without paying a cent. I've built it so that you can connect with all social platforms using just one node. So in this video, I'll show you what it does, how you can get the template, and then how you can set this up for your own business today. The solution is completely open source, so it gives you unlimited posts. So let me show you how the automation works. Go along and get the template and go to school com slash scrapes go into the classroom where we've got the resource hub with all of the templates and scroll down to the marketing section where we've got the social media scheduling posters link and we've got a few resources in here that we'll be adding around tutorials on how to configure each platform as well as how to set it up on a less.io if you want less hassle and as well as free hosting as well and we'll talk a little bit about both options later on in the video but for now let's grab the workflow json and we're going to click create workflow up here and we're just going to import that workflow json and then when it opens up it's going to look a little like this so once you open that you will have two flows. I've put in an additional flow inside here, which is actually repurposing a video transcript. So something I personally do is actually take my video URLs, I transcribe them and then repurpose them for different platforms like Twitter and LinkedIn. So I've included that as a separate template that we won't go over here. But down here, we've effectively got a template that takes all your social media post inputs, works out if there's images and videos, i.e. assets to attach to your posts, and then actually schedule those posts with or without the images or videos directly to posters. So we'll run this now, we'll show you what this looks like in the posters environment. And before we run it, we've got a Notion page set up as effectively like a content calendar. So we've got the LinkedIn platform and the Twitter post in here. And if we open this up, we've basically got our content that we want to post to LinkedIn. And right now I've connected LinkedIn directly to my automake.io channel to posters. And I've decided on a schedule date. So I've put in a date manually here, June 22nd, 2025. So that is this Sunday. And I've ticked the schedule button to suggest that this isn't just a draft anymore. This is ready to schedule. I've also then appended two files. So these are just test files to show you what you can do. You can also upload videos. It can just be text. The automation handles it all and it all handles it through one node, irrelevant of the number of platforms you've got on here. So if you had Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, as long as you hit that schedule button, our automation will run. So I've just got it set up in a schedule trigger here to check once per hour and it's checking this repurposing table. But if we just run this now, we'll show you the output of that. And I just need to make sure that that status is draft to make sure it runs. So if I run that, it's basically going to grab the content that it knows is ready for scheduling because it's draft and we ticked the box. It's going to decide then whether there are images attached in the files. So we saw that there were two images attached. So it's effectively downloading those and uploading them to posters in the back end. And then it's going to choose its path based on whether there are images or there aren't images. And it doesn't matter the number of images as long as they comply with the platform requirements. This will manage it all for you. And what you're going to see at the end then is it actually scheduling that LinkedIn post. So if we go to our calendar here on posters, and this is self-hosted and we'll show you how to set it up. We should see on Sunday at 3 p.m. We've got our post that's been completely scheduled. It's got the two images here. Here. It's got the text here. And actually, then that will post automatically for us on Sunday at 3 p.m. And I don't want it to post that. So I'm going to delete the post now. But what I'm going to do is run through now the full workflow to show you exactly how this works. And then we'll cover the setup and how to actually get posters self hosted for you. So this all starts with a schedule trigger of checking once per hour. And that's because I don't think you'd need to check every five minutes to check if there's new content in the table. But what I've effectively done is I've set up inside my scrapes HQ here a full table of content, which is effectively your content calendar, which I've called repo. Purposing. I've then added a series of platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn page. And I'll explain why it's LinkedIn page and not LinkedIn in a second. I've automated the content creation. So you saw this bonus flow up here, which is effectively repurposing my videos and turning them into LinkedIn and Twitter posts. And you can see the Twitter post is much shorter there. And then I've added a few manual fields. So I link this to my videos that I've created, and that's just for my reference sake. You don't need to do that. I've got a schedule date in here. So I choose a schedule date and then I also include the time here and that passes through to the automation. When it's ready to be scheduled, I tick the schedule box and all of these will default as draft. And as soon as the automation runs, it's checking to see whether this is scheduled or draft. If it's scheduled, it's not going to reschedule it again. And then we've also got the creation date of this actual row. And like I said, we've got the files and media. So you can upload as many files or media or videos that you want here as binary files. And it's going to download them from Notion and then upload them to posters ready to be processed into the relevant platform. So if we jump down to the flow down here, there's two things that you potentially need to change. The first is the input database. Not everyone's going to work with Notion. That's just something I work with. Airtable would work really well for this. Or maybe you just want something like a form trigger where you replicate all of the forms 
all of the fields inside here, but effectively inside that Notion node, we're just pulling the different information from that table. So it's as simple as pulling that information. We're then filtering, like I said, for things that are ready to be scheduled. So we want to make sure there's content in the row. We want to make sure that the schedule button is ticked true and it's a Boolean. We want to check that it's a draft and not already scheduled. If it's already scheduled, we don't want to schedule it again. And then we want to check that a scheduled date exists because we don't want to schedule it if there's no scheduled date in there. We're then simultaneously connecting or standardizing the inputs to our posters set up. So we've got our posters API endpoint here, and this will change and this won't be exactly the same. So I've put this box in red so that you can come in and add your own API endpoint here. But you'll basically have your URL in here, your URL slash API slash public slash V1 will be your posters API endpoint there. I'll just change that back. You have an optional title here. If you want to title them inside posters, it picks it up later when we actually send them to posters. And then inside here, we've got the content. So we pull in and in fact, I'm going to remove that because we pull in that later. So ignore the content there, but basically you need to update your posters API endpoint in there. We then call posters with a HTTP request to understand what integrations we've got set up. So you can see right now, I've just got a LinkedIn page in integration with my automate.io account. And this would have your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, all the channels that you set up here would appear in this list. So you'd have all of these different lists. And then what we're doing is basically merging those two together. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to understand from posters, the IDs of the integrations where we want to post. So say for LinkedIn page, we need to tell posters to post to this integration. So we need to merge that data that says, okay, the content for the LinkedIn page here needs to be linked to the identifier LinkedIn page. So we merge on that identifier in here. So you can see identifier and property platform naught, And then any that match, i.e. because we've got a Twitter post that's ready to schedule in here, but we've not actually set up a Twitter account or configured our Twitter account with posters yet, it will not be processed because what we don't want is to run into a series of errors because we don't have the integration configured. There are two routes then. It decides whether there are images in the image field. And if there are, it follows this route, which is a little bit more complex, but basically splits out and downloads all of the assets as binary files using a GET request, and then uploads those files individually to posters. And those then have an ID, which are linked to the post later on. If there are not assets connected to it, no videos, no images, then it actually is much simpler and you go and schedule the post immediately on posters. But I've set this up so that it manages multiple assets. So whether you have one, two, three, ten images, it will automatically add those and append those correctly to the HTTP request. So it makes it really simple because all you need to do in this automation is come and change these inputs here and make sure that you've got the correct database set up. So inside this code node, we're effectively outputting the correct JSON body, which goes into our posters request. So we send, send the posters request to actually post or schedule a bit of social media. We've got our posters API header, which you can go to settings up here, go to your public API and effectively come in here and grab the key there. And all you need to put in the header is the authorization and then the key below. And then this is where it gets a little bit more complex in the body. We effectively have different types. We can schedule as a draft. We can schedule as a schedule. So with a date and time like we saw, or we could post immediately if we wanted to. But the power in using something like posters is actually you can schedule posts. We're then, like I said, saying which integration or which platform do we want to post it to? And in this case, that's LinkedIn. And then we're putting the content down here inside this value object and the image or the image object is made up of potentially multiple images. So you can see here from map image data code node, we are effectively populating all of the image IDs as well as the paths to go and get those images inside here. And then optionally, we've got the title and other settings that we can add. And those are all in the posters API documentation. You can add more things, more fields to your content, but it really is as simple as that. And then it goes back and updates our status in our database, which basically says, okay, that post has successfully been scheduled and therefore it won't run again. So now you've seen how it all works. Let's look at actually how to set this up. And the posters.com is quite deceiving. You'll go to the pricing page and you'll think that's not free at all. But actually, when you self-host, it is free. It's effectively the same as NAN. If you use the self-hosted version, you can pay nothing. If you self-host it on your Docker can compose container on your computer, or you can pay to use their cloud version. This is the cloud version pricing that's displayed here. And it's not very obvious from the website that you can actually self-host it, but you can. So you can go to the developer docs and they've effectively got some different instructions here on how to self-host. And actually inside the documentation, they link to their YouTube channel, which has instructions on how to install this locally on your computer for absolutely free. They've also got how to set up different providers. And inside the community as well, we will have the different solutions on how to host this for free and a tutorial specifically on that and how to configure each social platform as well. Those are coming soon. So if we go back to the documentation, we've got different installation instructions in the posters documentation here. But what we're going to do is actually just do the low hassle route, which you can either get for free or you can pay for. 
And the reason you pay for it is because actually it's so much less hassle to pay for this. So you can see ls.io is where I've got my NAN server set up already. And what I would do, because it's really easy, is just go to create new service. And actually, if we type in posters, they've already got everything set up for you. We're just going to choose Hetzner. We'll choose the base standard. And this is going to cost me about $15 a month. So extremely cheap for all my social media scheduling. If you wanted to do this for free, and again, we'll provide instructions on how to do this inside the community, then you can either follow the instructions directly on the posters YouTube channel or inside ls.io. If you're already hosting on ls.io, you get this option to actually bring your own virtual machine. So it's a new option, as far as I'm aware, on ls.io, where you can enter your provider, your region, your different details here, and actually set it up in this way. And the way you do that is actually by using a free tier of another cloud provider. So for example, I searched this with Perplexity, you can get Oracle Cloud free tier, where you can actually set up your own instance for free. You've got Microsoft as your free tier, where you set up your own. And all you need to do then is get the correct credentials and bring those back to put them in the provider, the region, that the port and the IPv4 columns. And something like Perplexity can help you walk through that process. You can see my search down there. How can I host posters for free? What are the limitations? And the limitations are that actually inside ls.io, to have this free virtual machine, you have got some capacity constraints on what you can use. So make sure that when you're setting up one of these external services, that you make sure that they are under these constraints. Otherwise, you will be charged for that. But once you set up your own free tier elsewhere, as long as you're already hosting on ls.io, you get one free virtual machine. So you can run this for free. The alternative, like I mentioned, is to set this up locally using Docker Compose and instructions will be in the community on how to do so. So let's continue as if we're setting up a low hassle paid account. Go to next. We'll put in a name here, post this test. And we need to just leave everything as is with the basic support, etc. It gives us our plan details on here and we go to create service. And all we need to do then is wait. And actually we're going to get a link afterwards to our posters account. And once you log in and sign up, it's actually going to take you to something like this. So you'll have your own unique URL, which of course you can put on your own domain as well. I just haven't at this point. And then what you're going to have is a very simple dashboard, which lays out all the things we have here. You can create a new post directly through this platform, but obviously this isn't the power of the automation. What we want to do is be able to automatically schedule it from a given calendar. And then if you click add a channel, what you're going to run into is it effectively understanding that you haven't configured something. So if, for example, I click on something that I have not configured like X, it's going to say could not connect to the platform. Or if I try to go to Instagram, it will open up a new page, which basically says, okay, that, that one is working. So I've partially set it up. But if I go to add a new channel that I definitely not added, like Slack, something went wrong with authorizing this app. And that's because I need to pre-set up the app on that environment and put the client ID and client secret into my environment variables inside my ls.io instance. So I'll quickly show you an example using the posters documentation. And your best friend here is going to be the posters documentation because it has this providers configuration section, which shows you how to set this up. So if, for example, you want to connect it to your LinkedIn page, you head over to this documentation. And like I said, we'll have video tutorials going through each of these to show you how to do this much simpler. But for now, the documentation does the job. You go to the LinkedIn developers and you actually have to create a new app. You have to verify the app with LinkedIn. Make sure you have the right scopes. Add your redirect URI. So if I go to the LinkedIn developers as an example, you can see I've set up an app inside here called Posters. And I've added inside here a redirect URL for my app. So you can see that that redirect URL is my URL up to here. So up to dot app forward slash integrations forward slash social forward slash LinkedIn page. And that tells me to do that inside here. So we've got our front end URL integration slash social plus LinkedIn page at the end there. And it gives us a few alternate suggestions if you're hosting locally, etc. But then the most important thing that's going to stop these errors from happening is to make sure you've copied your client ID and client secret and added them to your .env file. So if you're feeling a little bit out of your depth here in the community, we'll have the resources showing you exactly how to do this. But let me show you for the LinkedIn client ID and client secret, how you would do that inside your newly managed ls.io instance. So if I go to auth here, I got my client ID and client secret. I'm obviously not going to copy those because I don't want anyone to see my secret. But if we look at the new service that should hopefully now be deployed, and this will take about 10 minutes to deploy, what we can do is go into the environment variables. So now that's up and running, we'll go into the posters test and I'll delete this afterwards, like never share any of these credentials. But if you go to update config, you can effectively see your Docker compose file. None of this is sensitive. But then if I go to the env file, that is sensitive information. But what you're going to do is just go back to your posters page here where it's got the providers configuration and you're going to add in your client ID and client secret into there. So if we go back to the Docker Compose. Firstly, we're going to add it under our environment variables here. So we'll copy paste those in and we will change those to match the format above. So what we're doing here is saying when it's trying to find the LinkedIn client ID and LinkedIn client secret, you should seek out the names in the environment variable, LinkedIn client secret and LinkedIn client ID. 
And then as long as we name it like that in the actual environment variable as well. Now I'm not going to show any of the passwords above here, but what you're going to do, if you see, you'll have a bunch of information in here. All you're going to do is copy in your like LinkedIn client ID and client secret and put in the actual values there. No need to have any exclamation marks as far as I know. So you put in your values there and that will be then saying to Docker Compose, once you update and restart, when it goes to find the LinkedIn client ID and client secret, go to the environment variables and you get those ID in secret from the actual app setup itself once you've configured it. All you're going to do then is update and restart. When you come back into your hosts environment, you'll go to add that channel, you'll click on the channel and hopefully then it will allow you to sign in and it will be set up forever to allow you to post unlimited social posts. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please give it a like below. It really helps me reach a wider audience.